In this video, I'll show you what are Jupyter Notebook and virtual environments, and how to use them. Hi, this is Jay and welcome to Python in Office. In this channel, we explore ways to use the Python programming language to make our office jobs and life easier. Most of the time when we use Python, we'll need to use some third-party libraries like Pandas, Botly, etc., which don't really come with the standard Python installation. Depending on your project, sometimes we need more than one version of a library installed on our computer. For example, project A might require Pandas version 1.0.1 .1, and project B might require Pandas version 1.2.0. We simply cannot have two versions of the same library installed on the computer at the same time. The solution is a Python virtual environment. It's a self-contained copy of Python plus all the libraries. Because each virtual environment is self-isolated, it doesn't interfere with the system-wide Python or other environment copies. So we can install different versions of the same library on our computer. To create a virtual environment, we're going to use a Python module called VN, which is part of the standard Python installation. Unlike other libraries that we need to import something inside the Python interpreter. Instead, we need to use the VM module inside a command prompt or a console window. So first, open up a console window. You can use either a command prompt or PowerShell or a, a terminal window. Go to the folder that we want to store the virtual environment. And I'm using the command CD or change directory to go to this folder. Once we're in the destination folder, type Python M VN. This refers to the VM module. So we're calling this module. Then type the virtual environment name we want to use. And in this case, I'll call it .vnv. In just a few seconds, we should see a folder named .vnv being created in our destination folder. Now let's go into the .vn folder and check what's inside. So in the script folder, there are the pip executable files. These are the actual pip programs that allow us to use the pip install in the console. And we also have the Python executables here. So all we need to do is run this activate executable file to activate the virtual environment. So in the console, we can type the folder path plus the file name, which is activate. And to confirm the virtual environment is activated, we should see this .vn appear in front of the command line. Let's do a test by installing pandas into this virtual environment. Once we have pandas installed, let's run this simple script to test. This script basically just import pandas and then print out the pandas version. Now, if we try to run this script in the idle, it won't work because the IDLE is using the system-wide Python environment, which doesn't have pandas installed yet. Instead, we need to run the script from the console screen where we have already activated a virtual environment. And let's run it here. And it runs successfully and display the pandas version number here. So when should we use a virtual environment? First instance is that when we need to constantly switch between different versions of a library, in that case, having different virtual environments for different versions will be a time saver. And second, when our project requires multiple libraries at once, it's known that having too many libraries at the same time could potentially cause conflict. And some people believe that it's a good practice to create new virtual environment for every Python project we have, because that way the libraries of every project are isolated from the system and each other. I want to argue that it's not really required unless maybe for larger projects or when a project requires a library that we don't use often. For example, I use pandas all the time for most of my projects. So I just have pandas installed for the system-wide Python environment instead of having to create virtual environment for each of my projects and then install pandas for them. That's a lot of work. If you have any questions up to this point, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Let's move on to Jupyter Notebook. So Jupyter Notebook is a web-based interactive development environment for many programming languages. And the three core languages that Jupyter supports are Julia, Python, and R. And that's where Jupyter name came from, actually. Jupyter Notebook can contain both computer code and human readable content, such as text or pictures, pretty much just like a physical notebook. Now let's first deactivate the virtual environment, and we're going to install Jupyter for the system-wide Python. If you already have Python installed, you should be able to use the pip install to get Jupyter Notebook. So just type pip install Jupyter and that will install the Jupyter Notebook on your computer. Once that's done, to open up Jupyter Notebook, we just need to type Jupyter space notebook in the console. And in a few seconds, a web browser will pop up. This is the front end interface where we can add code or other content such as text or pictures. And we can see that the console screen is still kind of running in the background. So don't close that window unless you want to shut down Jupyter Notebook because that's the back end calculation engine. 
Now let's create a new file inside this Jupyter Notebook and try to import pandas. We get this error because remember that we don't have pandas installed for our system-wide Python and we can link the virtual environment that we just created earlier to our Jupyter Notebook. So we're going to close Jupyter Notebook first and we're going to activate the virtual environment, the tot VM, and we're going to pip install another module called ipykernel. So here I also installed pandas again, but you don't have to do it if you've already done it. There's a thing in Jupyter Notebook called IPython kernel. It's basically the backend computational engine for the Jupyter Notebook. It's used to basically execute Python code. And by having this IPy kernel module, we'll be able to register our virtual environment with the Jupyter Notebook. So in the console, type python-m IPy kernel install dash dash name equal. And this name is essentially your virtual environment name. In my case, it's just tot vn. Press enter, then you should see a message like this. It says installed kernel spec tot vn. It means that now you have successfully linked the virtual environment to Jupyter Notebook. So let's open up the Jupyter Notebook again without activating the virtual environment from console. And in the new drop down menu, we see this .vn option. Click on that and a new notebook file will open. Now let's try again to import pandas and it's working now. To remove a virtual environment from Jupyter Notebook, we also need to do that from a console. Type Jupyter kernel spec list. This will show us the name of the virtual environment currently installed on Jupyter Notebook. So to remove this environment, just type Jupyter kernel spec uninstall plus the environment name. And you will have to enter Y to confirm. Then it will say that the virtual environment is removed successfully. Okay, so that's it for today. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give me a like and I'll see you in the next one.